knows how to get to the quarterback. You see his numbers there. He and his defensive compadres, however, will be up against it because Herschel Walker is back for Georgia. Number 34, who's been hampered in the first two games by that broken thumb, should be back to near 100% for the first time this season tonight here in Columbia against South Carolina. The Bulldog Television Network presents College Football 82. Today's game is brought to you by Budweiser. This Bud's for you. By Hertz, buy a car. More people buy cars from Hertz than from anyone else in the world. By Pepsi. Pepsi's got your taste for life. And by Levi Garrett Chewing Tobacco. Williams Bryce Stadium in Columbia, South Carolina. Today's game features the University of Georgia versus the University of South Carolina. Hi, everybody. I'm Steve Zabriskie, along with former collegiate head football coach Pepper Rogers, and welcome to Georgia football. Pepper, it has uh, a little contrast as far as the two coaches are concerned tonight because Vince Dooley, of course, has been around for almost 20 years. Richard Bell, although he's been an assistant for a long time, is this year a college head football coach for the very first time. Well, Richard's had some good training, and uh, his football team won their first two games, and they lost last week to a very fine Duke football team. Now, Coach Dooley is the winningest football coach in Georgia history and one of the leading coaches in the country. I know Vince has had some problems this week that might have kept his uh, mind off the game, but uh, the rest of the team will be ready, and I think we'll have an outstanding football game tonight. As we mentioned, Herschel should be back at near 100% for the first time, and that's got to be good news for Bulldog football fans because the offense has not done that well so far. No, they've had a tough time. Most of their offense has been passed interceptions by their defense, but I think Herschel's coming back will really help them. Stay with us. We'll be back for the kickoff in just a minute. for everyone who answers the call when someone needs help. Yeah, just for you, that distinctively clean, crisp taste that says Budweiser. For all you do. This Bud's for you. You can beat the $8,600 average price tag on a new car at your nearest Hertz used car sales location. 1981 Ford Escorts from only $44.99. 1981 Ford Fairmonts from only $45.99. Come in today and ask for your Bulldog discount. All cars come with the Hertz limited powertrain warranty at no extra cost. All cars selected from the finest in the rental fleet. Call 800-654-3131 for your nearest Hertz sales location. Here comes Carrier Help to cut home heating costs. 100,000 BTU Carrier high-efficiency furnaces with electronic ignition are just $600 plus installation. To get low preseason prices on Carrier furnaces or heat pumps, the time to buy is now. For safety and economy, your home's furnace needs pre-winter servicing. C&M's furnace tune-up and check-up is just $34 from now until October 31st. Cut heating costs this year. Call C&M Heating and Air Conditioning at 478-9643. Dear Republic, your agent, Mr. Lashbrook, saved me $234, making me a hero with McGovney. That's service. Dear Republic, I've called reservations many times and always been treated with utmost courtesy and even a sense of humor. Nobody serves a Republic like Republic. Welcome back to williams Price Stadium in Columbia, South Carolina, where the hometown Gamecocks have won the toss, and they have elected to receive much to the delight of the overflow crowd here in williams Price Stadium tonight. Georgia will be kicking off. 
Moving right to left. They'll be defending the north end zone to begin with here in the first quarter. Back deep to receive for South Carolina. Ira Hillary, number one, standing in the middle, actually in the end zone. Quint Terry Bishop and Quentin Lewis are flanking him to either side. And here is number five, Kevin Butler, the sophomore from Stone Mountain, Georgia, who will hit it. And we are underway. Well into the end zone, Hillary fumbles it out of the back line of the end zone. It'll be an automatic touchback, and Carolina will have it first and ten at their own 20. Offensively, it'll be Bill Bradshaw, quarterback. Dominic Blessing game will be the fullback, and Todd Berry, number 34, is the tailback. South Carolina with a multiple offense and many, many different sets. The receivers, Hillary, Wade, and Corley is the tight end to start. Walsh, Dykes, Gill, Danielowski, and Russell up front. First and 10 at the 20. The pitch back to the tailback. Todd Berry around the right side. Number 76, Donald Chumley, brings him down as he gets just across the line of scrimmage with help from number 14, Terry Hogue, the rover. Here's that front line for the Bulldogs. Carver, Chumley, Lindsey, Crow, and Gilbert in that 6-2 type of effect with Forts, Thurston, and Hogue, the rover back, along with the two linebackers. In the secondary, it's Harris, Flack, and Sanchez at safety. Second down and about nine to go. The option is Bradshaw cuts it straight back up the middle and gets across the 25 to about the 26 before he's brought down by number 91, Tim Crow, senior defensive tackle from Stone Mountain. It's a gain of about five and a half, six yards on the play, maybe, as they mark it just outside the 26. It'll be third down and four. That was a spin around option, uh, Steve. Uh, he made a nice move. He ducked up inside their defensive tackle out there and made a nice run. Big play if they are to keep the drive alive on third and four. Barry and Blasting game in the backfield behind Bradshaw, and it is Barry. Barry will not make it. Now he might. Yes, he has enough for the first down. As he spun away from one Georgia defender, he was hit by number 60, Tommy Thurston, the junior linebacker from Jacksonville, Florida, spun forward and got across the 30 for the first down. On oh, his Barry, he's uh, he's a tough runner right here. He's hit right in the hole, spins out. That's a fine run right there, and that's the type of run you have to make if you're going to win a, a tough football game against a team like Georgia. Great second effort gives South Carolina a first and ten at their own 31. We're just underway in the first quarter with no score. Barry again. Gets about three or four yards as he gets near the 35. Terry Hogue, number 14, the rover back, comes up to meet him there along with number 90, Freddie Gilbert, the left defensive end and a junior from Griffin, Georgia. Steve, what they're doing is they're taking a big tackle and moving him either from a balance line into an unbalanced line. He will go back and forth. Sometimes you'll go and make the set unbalanced, meaning they've got more on one side than the other, or else you'll come from unbalanced to balanced. He gained three. It's second down and seven at the 34 of South Carolina. The draw play to Blessing Game, and Blessing Game goes nowhere. Tackled just about at the line of scrimmage by number 47, Nate Taylor, senior linebacker out of Tifton, Georgia, who made a nice defensive play to stay with him. No gain on the play, maybe a half of yard outside the 35. For all intents and purposes, it is third down and still seven to go. Well, Blessing Game, of course, is the fullback in the eye formation. You have to be a fine blocker, but he, he made a nice run there to a low. He was tackled by Forts. Into the ball game now, number 39, Carl West at running back along with Barry. Bradshaw looking to throw and under pressure as the screen was on, but they didn't get it set up. And Bradshaw's run out of bounds by Terry Hogue on the near sideline. They will lose yardage back to the 23 of South Carolina, but a penalty marker was thrown. And Pepper, it could be that Georgia jumped offside. Yeah, he was close, and uh, he jumped, and I think they caught him offside. Uh, Hogue was blitzing from the outside, and he ran him out of the pocket, and Freddie Gilbert had him, and then turned and got, got away from Freddie. And if you get away from Gilbert, you're a pretty good football player. But I do think Georgia jumped offside, and will make it third down in about two and give uh, South Carolina another chance to make a first down. It would have been fourth down back at the 23 of South Carolina. Now it is still third down, just outside the 39. And as Pepper said, they have about two, maybe two and a half yards to go. Now number 17, Quentin Lewis, is in the backfield as they go to a power eye set. And it is Lewis who carries and has the first down as he gets to the 45. 
Steve, if you're going to beat Georgia, what you have to do is make yards between the tackles. You have to run at that wide tackle six. And South Carolina has a good game plan. They put Lewis in there that time. In that stack eye formation, he pounded in there after the penalty and made the first down. As you can see right here, he's got good blocking, and really he didn't uh, have to make too much on his own there. Pitch back to Barry on first and ten. Barry breaks one tackle and gets it across the 45, gaining perhaps two yards. He's out near the 48 before number 76, Donald Chumley, brings him down. And you look at what Todd Barry has done so far this season. Barry's a youngster out of Jefferson, Georgia, who uh, came to South Carolina. has done a nice job for him. As a coach, Richard Bell. You see Richard looking at his program on the sideline in his first season as head coach here at South Carolina. He was an assistant here, however, for quite some time. Bradshaw on second down looking to throw and does, and it's complete to Carl West out of the backfield. He's run out of bounds short of first down territory, however, as he gets it into Georgia territory at the Bulldog 48 before 14 Terry Hogue runs him out of bounds. It'll be third down and about three and a half yards to go. Here's a ground level shot of uh, West coming out of the backfield, catching a pass from Bradshaw. It's a flat pass. He slips through the line and makes a fine catch. It was a. Uh, here's another shot of it right here. It's a bootleg type fake. Fakes the tailback and all of a sudden hits him in the flat for about six yards. Third and three and a half as Bradshaw flips it out. West cannot hold on. It's incomplete and it'll be fourth down and about three and a half yards to go at the Georgia 48. Dale Carver, number 96, the fine senior defensive end out of Melbourne, Florida, putting the pressure on Bradshaw. And you see number 13 coming into the game, Chris Norman, the punter for South Carolina, who is averaging just right at 37 yards per punt so far this season. Jimmy Harrell, number 82, has dropped back in single safety for the Bulldogs, standing at about his own 10-yard line. The wind is really not a factor here this evening. It's swirling around the stadium at about five miles an hour. Very high, but very short kick coming toward the near sideline. Takes a Carolina bounce inside the 10. It'll be down to the four-yard line. Number 82, Skip Minton is down there to down it for South Carolina. A 44-yard punt with some help from a great bounce and roll off the foot of Chris Norman. You got to catch those punts, Donnie. You can't let them hit the ground. And if you do, things like that are going to happen. No matter what happens, somebody's got to catch it. In the backfield for the Bulldogs, lasting her quarterback with McCarthy starting at fullback, and Walker is back in. Our first chance to see Herschel at 100%. Harris Jones and Kay, the tight end, the receivers, McIntyre, Brown, Radloff, Weaver, and Harper. And I want to tell you, the South Carolina fans are exhorting their defense on. But McIntyre carries. McCarthy it is excuse me number 46 and Andrew Province the All-American candidate a defensive tackle and Ricky Haygood bring him down after a gain of about four but McCarthy pounded it out for about four yards to the nine yard line. Barry Young it is number 38 who's in at fullback. There's Herschel's first carry. Walker cutting it back inside. Very close to a first down. As he gets near the 15-yard line, 43 J.D. Fuller and 44 Paul Vogel, the two inside linebackers, tackle Herschel. But he does pick up enough for the first down. I like his play, the way Herschel ran the ball this time. He took the ball and he cut back quickly. He, he, uh, that, that gives him a chance to make a long run when he doesn't bounce outside. And he had some nice blocking at the point of attack and made a first down. They mark it right at the 15-yard line where it's first and 10, Georgia. We have 10-25 left to go in the first quarter. There's no score. This is the Bulldogs' first possession. Walker. Trying to get around the corner, Andrew Province hauls him down, and Walker drags him for a few yards out to the 20 for a gain of five. It'll be second down and five. Province had to get some help before they could bring Big Herschel down. You know, Herschel bounced outside that time instead of keeping himself in the hole. I think that one of the things that uh, Herschel uh, is doing a little better right now than when he did the first couple of games is he's running with much more confidence. And uh, even though he was tackled by a man who's one of the strongest guys on the team, he did manage to drag him a little bit. Second down five, Georgia at their own 20. Walker on the sprint draw, breaks one tackle, but he will not get away. Hit right behind the line of scrimmage by Kerry Johnson, number 84 senior outside linebacker from Athens, Georgia. Incidentally, there are 34 
Georgia players on the South Carolina team. Well, you know, Georgia and South Carolina have had a, a great recruiting war interstate-wise. They both go after one another's players, and uh, South Carolina knows that the state of Georgia plays very fine football, and they come down there and get some good players. No gain on the play. The crowd really coming to life here on third down and five at the Georgia 20. Lastinger for his first pass. He's going to haul it down and run. He's close, but not enough. He's short of the 25-yard line. Paul Bogle, number 44, knocks him down. It'll be fourth down and one. Georgia will have to kick. Now, this was a nice play by uh, John Lastinger, but uh, Pope Bogle made a nice play to stop him from making the first down. It's a good open field tackle, but I think uh, John made the right play by not throwing the football because all his receivers were covered, and now he's got a chance to punt the football. Georgia does. Jim Broadway, the senior, is in the punt for Georgia. Ira Hillary, number one, back in single safety, and Pat Bowen, number 25, is the short man for South Carolina near midfield. Broadway, under some pressure, a penalty marker is down as he hangs a beauty, and it bounds inside the 30, but they're going to call it back. I think the whistle actually blew before the play got underway. Yeah, I think Georgia took a little too much time. South Carolina was giving them an eight or nine man rush and they were counting off who they were going to block. When people move around uh, on uh, the, the punt, -like punt block type situation, it creates some problems for you on offense and that's when you usually have your delay of the games uh, because those offensive people are going, hey, block this one. That's Coach Dooley. He's early in the ball game. He's not sweating quite yet, but uh, I'm sure he will be before this ball game's over. It's going to be tough. They move it back inside the 20, fourth and six now, and Broadway will again hit it, this time from about his own 10-yard line. High, high punt. Hillary calling for the fair catch, takes it at the 44 of South Carolina. That's good field position, Steve. Yes, it is. A 37-yard punt which may not seem like a lot, but when you consider the fact that there was no return on it, it was an effective kick. However, Georgia, South Carolina does have very good field position. 7.58 to play in the first quarter. First and 10, South Carolina at their own 44. West, the ball carrier. Carl West getting across the 45, out to about the 46 before Tommy Thurston, number 60, junior linebacker, brings him down. A gain of about three yards on the play. It'll be second down and seven as they mark it just about at the 47 of South Carolina. No score with 7.38 left to go in the first quarter. You know, you've got to admire Tommy Thurston. You know, he has a, a back problem, has to stretch out for an hour before he practices and plays, and he plays with a great deal of pain. Lassen game back in now as Bradshaw is going to run it straight out. Near midfield and into Georgia territory at the 49 as he falls forward in the grasp of number 27, Ronnie Harris, senior defensive back from San Diego, California. It's not enough for the first down, but it will give them third down and about three just across midfield into Georgia territory. Uh, Steve, that, uh, that was not a pass. That was a run all the way. The wide receiver cracked back on the outside linebacker as opposed to going downfield for the pass, and he was trying to make the Georgia defense think that he was going to throw the football, but Bradshaw's a good runner and has an opportunity to run with the football. Bradshaw seemed to be a little bit confused and has called timeout, asking the officials for it, and that stops the clock with 6.53 remaining in the first quarter. We still have no score here from a jam-packed williams Bryce Stadium in Columbia, South Carolina. I've always enjoyed wearing fine clothes, but lately the price of a good suit has gone right through the roof. That's why I'm glad there's a Walton Clothes Factory store right here in town. Walton makes first quality suits, sport coats, and slacks. And now we can save by buying direct from the manufacturer. I've paid a lot for my suits in the past, but not anymore, because now I shop at the Walton Clothes Factory store. In Smyrna, Loganville, and the Arrowhead Shopping Center, Jonesboro. and 
10, South Carolina at the 28-yard line of Georgia. Three minutes to go in the first quarter and no score. Barry on the sprint crawl. Does not get away and picks up perhaps a yard to the 27 is all before 96 Dale Carver grabs him around the ankle and won't let go. Looks like to me, uh, Steve, that uh, George is bringing uh, people a little too far afield on defense sometime. They're overrunning the ball carrier. And uh, South Carolina's taking advantage of that, and that's what you have to do. And uh, Georgia it, uh, needs to play a little uh, more level along the line of scrimmage, it seems to me. That's why they're running the draw plays, is to take advantage of that penetration and pursuit. And so far, it's worked fairly well. Blasting game goes nowhere, however, as he is jammed right behind the line of scrimmage by Tommy Thurston, number 60, who met him just about the same time he took the handoff from Bradshaw. There will be a loss on the play of about four yards back to the 31 of Georgia, and it will now be third down and 13 yards to go for South Carolina. That was a big play for Georgia. It put him in a passing situation, third down and 13. And uh, Georgia, uh, in a passing situation, is a tough football team because they've got fine pass rushers. They've got people in the secondary who've intercepted 10 passes. So this is a tough position for South Carolina. Bradshaw so far one out of two for four yards passing. He's taking a very deep drop, setting up the screen to Barry. Barry has a blocker. Barry to the 20-yard line. It will not be enough for the first down, however, as Nate Taylor, number 47, and number 60, Tommy Thurston, make the tackle on him there. He'll be about two yards short of the first down as they mark it right at the 20. It'll be fourth and two with 120 left to go in the first quarter and no score. Little screen pass. I said uh, George was coming after him, and they knew what I they knew what they were going to do, and they threw a screen pass, and it was a nice run, and almost a first down for South Carolina. They've got a decision to make now. It was Todd Berry. South Carolina now has asked for a timeout, stopping the clock with one minute and 14 seconds remaining in the first quarter. It'll be fourth down and two. This is a uh, decision. I'm, if I were coaching, one fourteen to go in the first quarter. South Carolina has talked about it and decided to go for the field goal. Number ten, Mark Fleetwood who is six of six kicking field goals so far this season is into the game. Number 13, Chris Norman, the punter, will do the holding as they will spot the ball at the 27. It will be a 37-yard field goal attempt from the right hash mark for the soccer-style kicking Mark Fleetwood. Mark's a good kicker. He was in my camp at Georgia Tech. He's a nice young man, and as you can see, he's got a great record. He's a good kicker. He is a great competitor, and he drilled it right through the uplights. That's what I would have done if I'd have been in South Carolina. Do exactly what Richard Bell did. Kick. Well, we didn't have to tell you whether it was good or not. The crowd can do that quite well here in Columbia. And so Fleetwood is perfect on the year. He has not missed an extra point either, as you may have seen on the graphic a moment ago. He's now seven out of seven, and the 37-yard field goal gives South Carolina a three-to-nothing lead with 110 left to play in the first quarter. Wow. Some people think a ball player would be lost out of uniform. Don't you believe it. As long as I've got my Levi Garrett with me, I can handle any sport. I think Levi Garrett's the best taste of chewing tobacco I ever tried. And you'll be saying it, too, every time you enjoy that great taste in loose leaf or plug. Whoa! So whether you're pitching a big game or playing this big game, get the best taste of chewing tobacco I ever tried. Levi Garrett. With all these points, the record's mine, that's clear. Let's buy a man a nice cold beer. Bull! Bull! You get a big bowl of blue when the bull is here. The Schlitz Bowl Liquor Bowl will give you more tips than beer. So don't say beer, just say bowl. The Schlitz Bowl Liquor Bowl. Hey, the bowl really scores! Steve Zabriskie, along with Pepper Rogers, back with you in Columbia, South Carolina. Where South 
Carolina leading three to nothing kicks it off. Daryl Jones, number 17. No, it's Carney Norris, number 36, who takes it. And Norris brings it out to the 22, but a penalty marker goes down. 28, Otis Morris makes the tackle for the South Carolina coverage team, but the penalty marker was thrown right at the point where the tackle was made. Here's our referee, Thomas Stammert, to give us the indication clipping against Georgia. As you see South Carolina coach Richard Bell on the sideline. We have a split crew of officials. Part of them from the major independent collegiate athletic association and the other half from the Southeastern Conference working this game here in Columbia. Thomas Thammert is of the MICAA and he's the referee who moves the ball back to the 10. Half the distance to the goal on the clipping penalty. And again Georgia with poor field position to start this drive with 105 remaining in the first quarter. Georgia is playing against a very tenacious, fired-up football team and a hostile crowd. They're going to have to get it, get it going. Barry Young and Herschel Walker in the backfield, and it's Barry Young, the fullback, banging ahead with good second effort. Picks up three or four yards. Another penalty marker is down on the play, however, as Phil Ellis, number 80, an outside linebacker and a senior out of St. Petersburg, Florida, made the tackle, along with number 70, Andrew Province. And the Carolina players are moving back, so I would assume that it is against South Carolina. Thomas Stammert marking it off against the Gamecocks, a five-yarder out to the 15-yard line. And they are offside on the play, so it will be first and five. And the Bulldogs will have a little better position, a little more room to operate now from the 15. Yeah, I like Ellis, uh, Steve. You know, he started 29 straight games. When you do that as a defensive football player, you know, you're tough. That's for sure. He apparently has not been injured very often. First down and five, Georgia. Walker fighting for yardage and may have enough for the first down as he's near the 20. Finally dragged down by James Sumter, number 47, a sophomore inside linebacker out of Camden, South Carolina. And it will depend on where they mark the football as to whether or not it is a Georgia first down. And they're going to call a timeout and ask for the chains to be brought on for a measurement. Herschel ran that time like he was uh, a little angry at being stopped. He ran with some momentum and some force down the field. And uh, if he'll give him a chance, then he can make some yards. But uh, South Carolina is not giving an inch. Linesman brings the chains on, and you'll see for yourself if, in fact, Georgia has a first down. It is very, very close. And the referee Thomas Stammer takes a long time deciding. Now he says they're one inch short. That's short. Uh, here we go. Let's watch Hirsch. This time they'll have the fullbacks block. He's coming in there tough and hard. And every time Herschel gets the football, the linebackers fire for South Carolina. And it makes it very tough because then they're playing against an eight-man front. And uh, But Herschel ran with some momentum and some tilt and made the uh, almost the first down. It is second down and one inch to go. As you look at Ben Stewley on the Georgia sideline. 24 seconds remaining in the first quarter. Final play of the first quarter. Second down, one inch to go. Lastinger taking advantage of it and puts one up in the air. Deep down the far sideline. Penalty flag goes down. The pass is complete. Melvin Simmons with a fine catch. Earl Johnson, number 22, is covering him on the play. It is at the South Carolina 40, and the penalty marker will be against the Gamecocks. It's a good call by Georgia. Second down and inches. He makes a fine throw. Fakes, he faked the football to Herschel Walter. And uh, as you can see, it's an interference call. But it was a good, good call. That's what uh, everyone likes to see. And Simmons held on to the football. The junior from Williston, Florida, with a fine catch, giving Georgia their best field position of the afternoon with a first and 10 at the 40-yard line of South Carolina. The clock's still running, and Georgia's going to like to let it run out here in the first quarter, as now time has expired. That's the end of the first quarter from a sold-out and very noisy williams Price Stadium in Columbia, South Carolina, with the Gamecocks leading the Georgia Bulldogs at the end of one quarter, three to nothing. I like that, Steve. Uh...
the policy of mutual assured destruction, which bears the appropriate acronym MAD, has paralyzed United States strategic thought for two decades. In recent years, the decline in U.S. military strength and a continuing Soviet military buildup have called into question our ability to survive and respond to a Soviet first strike. It is time for a bold new stroke in strategic planning. I'm General Dan Graham, and I am the project director of High Frontier. High Frontier is the result of the efforts of over a score of the best scientists, engineers, economists, and management specialists that we could muster. If you wish to be more fully informed, and I hope you will be, please write to us at this address, High Frontier, 1010 Vermont Avenue, Washington, D.C., 2005. Ask for our full report. Come on, baby, I'll buy you a beer. Bull. Bull? If you want to get your message through loud and clear, the bull shows a lot more taste than beer. So bull, so smooth. Yeah, Schlitz Malt Liquor is in the groove. Don't say beer, say Schlitz Malt Liquor Bull. The best kept secret in Atlanta is on Roswell Road in Sandy Springs. It's Sandy Springs Toyota, the largest Toyota sales and service facility in the southeast. I'm Eddie Bosquick, general sales manager of Sandy Springs Toyota. We'll beat any advertised deal on a new Toyota car or truck, like our popular two-door Corolla for less than $6,000. Don't pay high list prices and high dealer prep charges. Come to Sandy Springs Toyota for the deal of your life. Sandy Springs Toyota for the largest and finest in sales and service. Start the second quarter, first and ten, Georgia, the South Carolina 40, Herschel. Pile driving straight ahead for at least five as he takes it to the 35 before Ricky Haygood, the junior out of Easley, South Carolina, number 97, and number 42, Mike Dura, combine to make the stop on him there. They'll mark it at the 34, a gain of six for Walker. It'll be second down and four. Herschel has now carried seven times and picked up 25 yards. That was a counter play for Herschel. And Herschel needs some counter plays because then he can go away from the flow. Because when he gets the football, everybody, everyone goes after him. Second down, about four and a half to go. Walker again. Nowhere. Martin, number 98 and number 82, Skip Minton, stayed with Herschel the whole way and dropped him for a loss back at the 38 of South Carolina. It'll be third down and eight now for Georgia. You see, on that particular play, uh, uh, South had an easy shot at Herschel because he was going laterally, laterally to the line of swimming. And uh, you've got to turn that ball downfield. Lasting her to pass on third and eight. Incomplete intended. For Clarence K, the tight end. Incomplete. It'll be fourth down and eight. A lot of pressure on uh, Lassinger, and uh, the pass was overthrown. And you got to hit those, though. If you don't hit them, uh, you're not going to make the first down and keep it going. Jim Broadway in the punt. Lassinger now one of three for 50 yards passing. Of course, that big one was the 50 yarder. Pat Bowen, number 25, back in safety as Broadway will hit it from just about midfield. Again, a high hanger. And it goes out of bounds, and they will mark it about the 12 yard line. Field position has changed, though, now. The ball's back at the 12, and Georgia has moved the ball out of, out of trouble. And now, all of a sudden, they've got the uh, South Carolina football team back at the 12-yard line. Carl West, number 39, and Quentin Lewis, number 17, in the backfield behind Bradshaw. This is Lewis. On first and ten, Lewis picks up a yard at best before number 60, Tommy Thurston, knocks him down at about the 13-yard line. It'll be 
Second down and nine yards to go as we're just underway here in the second quarter. South Carolina leading Georgia three to nothing, and the Gamecocks have the ball just outside their own 13. West to about the 16 for a gain of three, and that's all. As number 60, Tommy Thurston again was there to make the tackle, this time with help from 57, Kenneth Sims, a sophomore out of Greenville, South Carolina. It'll be third down and about six yards to go. This is a good football player in the Plenty, Florida, and uh, number Thurston, uh, Tommy Thurston out of Jacksonville is a good football player, and they met head on. We thought it was going to be a physical, defensive, hard-hitting football game, and it has been. A little razzle-dazzle by Carolina as they give it to Lewis on the end around. Actually, more of a wingback around, and Tony Flack, number eight, makes the tackle for the Georgia defense and may have stopped Quentin Lewis short of first down yardage. He needed to get across the 23. He's close to it. I like that play. Went back, set up, faked the pass. Used to be called a Sally Rand play, the naked reverse. And uh, he almost made the first down, and his inches short. Looks like they're going to punt. But it was a nice looking football play. And the kicking team does come on for South Carolina, as you see, number 13, Chris Norman, who is on to kick. Back deep to receive for Georgia, number 82, Jimmy Harrell, standing at about his own 35. Norman with good time, good protection, a line drive shot. However, Harold takes it at the 37. Has an opening and busts it up near midfield, getting it out to about the 47 or 48 before Harry South, number 83, sophomore out of Savannah, who's done some great work on special teams for South Carolina, makes the tackle there. It'll be first and 10, Georgia, at their own 48. This buds for everyone who's got the heart and courage to go the distance. clean, crisp taste that says Budweiser. This Bud's for you. Oh, you want to make a deposit? You bet, $30. Yeah, it's our McCulloch rebate money. McCulloch? You mean McCulloch chainsaws? Yeah, with McCulloch's rebates, you can save up to $30 on gas and electric sauce. What do beavers need a chainsaw for? We're building a lake house. A lake house? With a fireplace and a hot tub. A hot tub? Yeah. <laughs> Sounds romantic. Hey, anyone ever tell you you have great teeth? I think she likes you, Barney. <laughs> get a McCulloch with chain break. And get a rebate at your local McCulloch dealer. Georgia, first and ten from the 11-yard line of South Carolina. Walker. Great penetration by the South Carolina defense as they get Walker in the backfield. Andrew Province and Paul Martin, number 98, on the stop. Steve, they had penetration, and as we said earlier, no matter how good you are, if uh, you don't have a chance, you can't make anything. And South Carolina's putting eight people up there on the line of scrimmage, and we got a little call here, but I think we're waiting for him to tell us, aren't we? He said offside against South Carolina. So that defensive play will go for naught as Georgia will get the football now inside the 10-yard line. The penalty will move it down to the 6, where it will still be first and about 5 yards to go as we look at Richard Bell, his first year as head coach at South Carolina, and not exactly thrilled with that defensive mistake on the part of his players. Well, Coach Bell knows you can't line up offsides, and that's what they do. They did not jump. They just lined up offsides. First down and 5 from the 6. Walker to the five and that's all I have uh, seen Herschel run before and uh, Herschel's not getting any uh, chance to run they won't let Herschel run his uh, Gilliland I guess making the tackle in here as he bounces through and look at the hits coming in right there supporting from the secondary I like that that's good tough defense and you can't stop the Herschel Walkers the great backs unless you have a lot of people in on the tackle 20 Bryant Gillard safety and a sophomore of Hinesville, Georgia, along with Andrew Province on the tackle. Second down, four yards to go from the five. Walker looking for an opening, nowhere. Again, 
and it was J.D. Fuller, number 43, with another super defensive play, getting help from Ricky Haygood, number 97, as they stayed right with him. Uh, here we go from the power high. They pitch that ball back to Herschel, and Herschel tries to cut back, but there's pursuit from the inside, and as you can see right here, Ellis, a lot of people in on the hit for South Carolina. Nice defensive football play. Third down. Four yards to go. They can get a first down at the one without scoring. Lastinger running the option down to the one-yard line, and he may have enough for a first down. Nice call, Pepper. Steve, I think Georgia needs the option some more in their offense. You can see right here, they fake the fullback. And uh, back goes in motion. They're going to fake the fullback inside, freeze the defense. The man comes upfield to take Herschel, and Lassinger comes inside and goes almost for a touchdown. And I think that really will help the Georgia offense to have some form of option play like that to just keep from letting everybody know who's got the football. That is only if they do, in fact, have a first down, as they're going to measure. That would only be Georgia's third first down, and we have 8.46 to go in the first half. Here's the measurement. Well, I can tell you one thing. If it's not a first down, they'll go for it. <laughs> it is. It is by more than the width of the length of the football. And again, it was J.D. Fuller, number 43 for South Carolina, who kept Lastinger from getting it into the end zone. They are just inside the one, the nose of the football at the one-half yard line. Well, Fuller was sucking grass to the province and tackles. He is a uh, good defensive football player and has been all over the field. Do you think we might see Herschel go up and over the top here? I think we'll see a replay. Power eye formation. Walker at the tailback. Here he goes. No. Skip Minton, number 82, and Andrew Province, number 70, who's in on almost every tackle at the line of scrimmage, keep Herschel from getting into the end zone. And if he isn't in, he's awful close. It'll be second down and goal. Uh, Province got penetration here, and Herschel tried to jump. And uh, you cannot jump when they hit you from the outside like Minton did, and Province is underneath. You've got to have a chance to jump, and uh, no penetration will allow him to jump. jump. Second down and goal. Ball inside the one. South Carolina leading three to nothing here in the second quarter. Lasting your touchdown, Georgia. That's a good call. He followed the full back in on the option. It takes some of the pressure off of Herschel. I think it was a fine call from uh, the bench or, or Lassinger or whoever, but it was a good football call. He followed the full back right into the end zone. As you can see right here, he fakes the full back and then follows inside it. The outside man went upfield for Herschel, and he scored the touchdown to put Georgia out there. And we've heard from the Georgia fans for the first time this evening as... The Bulldogs lead 6-3 to three now, and the extra point attempt by Kevin Butler. Broadway, the punter, is holding. And Butler's kick is good. Butler, who has made four out of four on the season now, and with 7.58 remaining in the first half, Georgia has taken the lead from South Carolina as the Bulldogs lead the Gamecocks here in Columbia 7-3. You can beat the $8,600 average price tag on a new car at your nearest Hertz used car sales location. 1981 Ford Escorts from only $44.99. 1981 Ford Fairmonts from only $45.99. Come in today and ask for your Bulldog discount. All cars come with the Hertz limited powertrain warranty at no extra cost. All cars selected from the finest in the rental fleet. Call 800-654-3131 for your nearest Hertz sales location. Feast your eyes on the Boston Sea Party Feast. We give you all this for one price. It's a celebration of seafood. Celebrate the Boston Sea Instructions to Lastinger, who went over to the sideline during the timeout. It's seven to three, Georgia. The Bulldogs trying to get some more on the board as we near the end of the first half. Two thirty-six remaining in the second quarter. South Carolina scored first, and Georgia came back with a touchdown from Lastinger. First and ten. Lastinger firing it. Complete touchdown to the tight end Clarence K with another super catch. 
outstanding play, but a good throw. Good throw, good catch. Bullet, he threw that football in there. Uh, beat the free safety, looking like Bowen over there. Went right through him for the touchdown. Here we go, let's watch this. He sprints out, gets a nice block. Takes the football, drills it right in between defenders. Catches the football, K does, and it's in the end zone. Breaks a couple of tackles. Touchdown, University of Georgia. Clarence Case from South Carolina. Here we go, we got another look coming up here. Uh, after the point. Kevin Butler's extra point is again perfect and Georgia with 231 left to play in the half has now taken a 14 to 3 lead. We'll look at the touchdown one more time. I like this throw by, by John Lassinger because he drills that football. He th follows through. It's right on target. Kay catches the football breaks the tackle goes into the end zone and it's a big big play for the University of Georgia and uh, Lassinger made it because he made the key play on third down. The pass, which gave him a lot of confidence to Harris, and then he comes back and throws that. I think that'll mean a lot to Georgia's football team. Q, the Music FM, we're dedicated to quality programming for Atlanta's most demanding and dedicated people. Our listeners, 94Q, dedicated to you. Georgia leading 14 to 3 now as Butler kicks it off with 231 left to go, and Butler really booms this one clear over the end line for again no return. Only two kickoffs now have been returned against Butler so far this year. First and ten, South Carolina at their own 20 on the automatic touchback. That's a nice picture of Kay who just scored that touchdown. Looks like a happy young man, South Carolina youngster playing for the University of Georgia. Well, that's two great catches he's made to show us great hands tonight. And the touchdown was a fine one because he was able to maintain his balance and get into the end zone for the score. First and ten, South Carolina. Barry striding to the outside and getting about five yards before he's knocked down by number 96 Dale Carver the left defensive end and a senior out of Melbourne Florida. It'll be second down and five yards to go. You know the worst thing that uh, South Carolina could do now would be to panic and then start trying to score on every play. Uh, if they want to have a chance in this football game they're just a tough football team. Uh, they've got to be patient and keep battling away just like Georgia did when they were behind. Second down and five. West number 39 Carl West for short yardage Nate Taylor number 47 on the tackle for Georgia and West with a little second effort got pretty close to the first down when he first got hit it looked like he'd go down a lot sooner but he moves it out just short of the first down marker it'll be third down and about a half a yard to go less than that. I like youngsters like West. Uh, he hurt his knee last year, missed the last 10 games, and battles back, still playing tough football, running hard. As uh, Lastinger, he looks happy also. I know that last pass really helped his confidence. Third down and about a foot to go. Quentin Lewis has it, and then some as he picks up five yards out to the 35 of South Carolina. Again, 96 Dale Carver making the tackle for Georgia. stops as they move the chains on the first down out to the 35 one minute and 20 seconds as it starts now the clock running here toward the end of the first half as you look at Richard Bell on the South Carolina sidelines his first year with a record of two and one coming into tonight's game first and ten South Carolina at their own 35 Barry good hole picks up about four as he gets near the 39 and again it's Dale Carver Number 96 who makes the tackle. And South Carolina has not stopped the clock. There are 50, 50 seconds exactly now remaining in the half. 
It looks like they want to go in uh, to the halftime with a 14 to 3 uh, deficit. I know the fans don't like that, and uh, I can hear a few boos coming out of the stands. But uh, if you lose the football right there, but uh, maybe they'll put one up this time to keep the fans from doing it. Second down, seven. 31 seconds left in the half. Penalty flags are down as Bradshaw fires long down the near sideline. Intercepted. Tony Flack, number eight, the freshman out of Greensboro, North Carolina, went high to snare that one. But remember, a penalty marker is down back at the line of scrimmage, and Georgia may have jumped offside. If they were drawn, it will be against South Carolina, but I think it is against Georgia. Yes, it is. Referee Thomas Thamert of the Major Independent Collegiate Athletic Association giving us the indication. We had a defensive man jump offside, and uh, it cost Georgia the football. They threw this ball to a bishop. Bradshaw did, and it was well played by Flack. The ball should never have been thrown because he was covered all the way. Although he, you could say he was just trying to maybe get a pass interference or something like that in the last play of the game. Or the half, rather. Offside against Georgia, the indication. 22 seconds remain in the half. South Carolina will get another shot. And after the markoff, it will be second down and short yardage as they will move the ball out to the 43 and it'll remain second down now with about a yard and a half to go. I don't think they'll get behind Georgia on this pass. I think George is watching for pass. 22 seconds to go in the first half. Georgia leading 14 to 3. Second down and a yard and a half to go for South Carolina. Bradshaw to pass. And that was intercepted by Terry Hogue. Terry Hogue, the roverback, picks it off at the 35-yard line of Georgia, and with 13 seconds, the Bulldogs get the football back. Great-looking interception here, Steve, by Hogue. And uh, Georgia was ready for the pass. They took the football right away from the uh, defensive man on a great leaping interception right there. Terry Hogue, that gives Georgia 11 for the year. One in only three games. And that's a lot. Here we are again. You can see he's got his eye on the football. He's not watching anything but the ball. Brings it down. Cradles the football. Turns his back to the ground so he can hold the football. That was Hogue's third interception as the fullback Barry Young fumbles the football. South Carolina recovers. Back to back turnovers. And I think Pat Bowen, number 25, and Andrew Province, number 70, were there to make the defensive play. And we may have another injured player. Somebody is slow getting up. Here's the football given to the full back up the middle. And this is one time you just can't fumble the football. You've got to hold the ball and not let them take it away from you. That was Fuller who really made the hit there and knocked the football away from him. And he's had a lot of great football games for South Carolina. Fine football player. Now this gives South Carolina a chance with nine seconds to. Right. And that's why they just called timeout, as a matter of fact. As you look at the fighting Gamecock mascot, that was Georgia's first turnover. South Carolina has made two. And we have nine seconds remaining on the clock. South Carolina calling the timeout because they have the football first and ten at the Georgia 39. As you look at Pat Bowen, who made the defensive play on the fumble by Barry Young, the Georgia fullback. So South Carolina, Pepper, will have at least one more shot to try and put the ball in the end zone. Well, they'll put it, they'll throw it in the end zone at least, uh, other, uh, at least have a chance. No, they're going to kick a field goal, it looks like. Uh, yeah, they the sent, they've sent the kicker yeah, in. Field goal. I guess they figure they've got a better shot at getting three points. Norman, number 13, will do the holding. And Mark Fleetwood, number 10, who is seven out of seven, will attempt the field goal, and it will be a 56-yard attempt as Norman will hold it at the 46. A 56-yard attempt, a bit of a following win, but not much. Nine seconds remaining on the clock here in the second quarter. 14-3, Georgia leading. And a 56-yard attempt by Fleetwood. Line drive way short and low. Never had a chance as he hit the ball up high near the center of the football, and it just barely made it over the line of scrimmage. That's why, really, that was a little dangerous, that long of a kick, because, you know, that ball could have been blocked. And Georgia could have picked it up and ran for a touchdown, because that's the kind of plays that Georgia will make on you with their quick defensive football team. Uh, I was a little surprised that they didn't throw the football in the end zone and take a chance on a great One catch. time, at least, that's right. first down. Well, if they get pass interference or they get anything down there, they've got a chance to kick a field goal from there if they get it to five-yard line. But that was really a, a long kick. 
You saw the clock. Three seconds remaining. Georgia now will run the clock out as Young takes it and fumbles the football again. One second remaining on the clock. South Carolina has it. Andrew Province, you see him there, number 70, came up with the football. Back-to-back -back fumbles, three turnovers in a row in four plays. That is unbelievable. I mean, you would have, you know the coach has told him to hold on to the football. We're going to try another one. Now Fleetwood's back in again to try another field goal, and this time from the 48, it'll be a 58-yard attempt. One second on the clock. That's the play with Providence grabbing the fumble. Here goes Fleetwood's kick. This time he gets it up. It's good. He made it. That was a great kick. I said they shouldn't try it. I was wrong. He made this one. When you get two chances, y'all make one out of two. That's a big play for South Carolina at the half, really. It gives them some momentum. Boy, to this record stadium crowd of 74,200 love it here in Columbia tonight. As the clock runs out, Fleetwood, his previous long had been 45 yards, kicks a 58-yard field goal, and it is 14-6 Georgia as we end the first half on a rather dramatic note. Carolina, williams Bryce Stadium, Georgia leading South Carolina 14-6. And I would have to say that some momentum might be on the side of the Gamecocks going into the second half following that school record 58-yard field goal on the final play of the first half. Yeah, that was a great kick by Fleetwood. The South Carolina football team was down 14-3. He towed the ball through the uprights, and they ran it into halftime with a lot of enthusiasm, patting one another on the back, and all fired up. And I think that will make them come out for the second half much more ready to play 14-6 uh, to six, and uh, let's say 14-3 to three as they were down. It's been primarily a defensive game, as you know, if you've been with us. But offensively, Bill Bradshaw has been a bright spot for South Carolina. Yeah, I like Bill Bradshaw. He goes back to throw the football here, and he's trapped, and he's got a lot of pressure from a Georgia defense that has a lot of speed and a lot of quickness. And you can see as Freddie Gilbert chasing him, but uh, Bradshaw turns it on and turns it into a nice gain. And it's, it's nice to have a quarterback that can do that. And one thing I like about this play, uh, Steve, is he does not shy away from the tackler. He turns it on, and when he finds a man going to hit him, he makes about another yard or so. I like that about Bradshaw. He also throws a screen pass here to Todd Berry, who he fakes with the football. You can see Berry, he faked him on the uh, sort of a sprint draw type thing, then he rolls back and drops the ball off, and Berry played very well all night uh, also on running with the football, but this is a nice screen pass and uh, gave them a first down in a key situation in the first half. He and Clarence Kay hooked up on a couple of super receptions in the first half as well. Well, John Lassinger did uh, a nice job hitting uh, Kay, but here Lassinger's going to take the football when they couldn't get the ball in the end zone, and he fakes the fullback here on the option and then follows him into the end zone. I like that play. Uh, Lassinger did a nice job on this, and I think this really helped the Georgia offense to be able to run an option football play. Now here, uh, Kay catches the football coming uh, out of the tight end position and scores at the touchdown and puts Georgia ahead 14-3. to John Lassinger, who had a nice night, threw the football, he zipped that ball in there, and watch Kay catch this football and bounce around, slam off a man, and then put the ball in the end zone. That's big league football there and put Georgia ahead 14 to three. Even though the Bulldogs are leading statistically, who would have believed that even at halftime, South Carolina would have rushed for more yardage than Georgia? Well, they did a nice job on Georgia defensively. They stopped Herschel Walker. He gained 33 yards and 15 carries. That's about two yards a crack. And Herschel is the big gun for the University of Georgia. And South Carolina ran the football very well with Barry. And uh, as you saw, Bradshaw make a nice run there. So it's been a tough first half. What about the second half? Well, Herschel's going to hit at him and hit at him and hit at him. And that 230 pound, pounds wears down a lot of folks. And I expect Georgia to give the ball to him and him have a much better second half. 14-6 Georgia at halftime. We'll be back with the second half kickoff in just a minute. Steve Zabriskie along with Pepper Rogers back here in Columbia as we're ready to start the second half. Daryl Jones and Carney Norris are deep to receive the kickoff for Georgia as South Carolina boots it deep into the end zone and it'll be a touchback first and 10 Georgia at their own 20 yard line. 14 to 6 Georgia leading South Carolina and Pepper that record 58 yard field goal at the end of the first half has got to give Carolina some momentum. I think they ran much faster covering that kickoff 
because they uh, kicked that uh, long field goal instead of going at the half, 14 to three down and, and, and also a little out. Uh, they kicked the field goal and now they're right back in this football game. John Lastinger leads him up on first and 10 from their own 20. He has Young and Walker in the backfield behind him. Herschel carrying the football, looking for an opening. Andrew Province grabs him around the shoulder pads along with number 98, Paul Martin. And again, just as he did in the first half, Walker's having a problem finding much running room. I know Vince Lombardi used to say run right at this strength and demoralize them, but I think I would <laughs> run away from Andrew Province. I don't think Vince would even try to run right over Andrew. They're having a tough time. He stacked up the play again. And as quite often happens with Herschel, it looks initially like he's not going to make much, and then he does. He picked up four yards. It's second down and six. Georgia at their own 24. McCarthy, the ball carrier, but a penalty marker is down at the line of scrimmage. Phil Ellis, number 80, makes the tackle on McCarthy out near the 30-yard line, but the penalty flag was thrown upon the snap. Offsides against South Carolina will probably be refused because McCarthy may have picked up enough for a first down. As you look at Vince Dooley, with a great record of 142 victories, 58 losses, and six ties in 19 years at Georgia. Referee Thomas Thamert of the MICAA refusing the offside penalty is Georgia. They'll take the play in McCarthy's game, which gives them a first down at their own 30. South Carolina is lining up offsides, and uh, that is not good defensive football. You must not line up offsides. McCarthy and Walker in the backfield behind Lastinger on first and 10 Georgia from their own 30 Walker good blocking and Herschel still going has a first down as he gets near the 41 a penalty marker is thrown after the play however number 80 Phil Ellis again making the tackle on Walker who appeared to have picked up 10 yards but we'll wait for the indication and here it is a dead ball foul a personal foul for a late hit against South Carolina so Herschel's 10 yard run will have something tacked on to it. Yeah, it's the kind of play to Herschel and the kind of football play that helps him a little bit. Fine block coming through the hole, but Herschel keeps his feet and he won't go down. And there is a late hit here, as you can see, coming in late. It was number 27, Finney. And uh, it was definitely a late hit, uh, Steve. That moves the ball into South Carolina territory just across the 45, just inside the South Carolina 45. 13 minutes and 50 seconds to go in the third quarter. 14-6 Georgia leading. First and 10 Bulldogs at the South Carolina 45. Walker looking for an opening. Hauled down by number 82, Skip Minton. Sophomore outside linebacker, but Walker with his great strength spins forward for three yards to the 42. It'll be second down and seven. Uh, Minton made a nice play on Walker that time, and it looked like if Herschel had just bent the football back just a little further than he did, he hesitated. And as opposed to hitting and breaking back to the weak side, he might have had that long run he's been looking for. 18 rushes, 51 yards. Georgia now on second down and seven. Walker again. Good hole. Walker in the open field. Has the first down and is finally collared out of bounds at the 30-yard line. But picks up 15 big yards before Harry Skipper, number 26, a senior defensive back out of Baxley, Georgia, runs him out of bounds along with number 43, J.D. Fuller. Here's a nice looking football play. Herschel delays and takes the ball to the weak side. He comes into the open for the first time in this whole football game. But again, breaking to the outside, he is just, just not going to make long runs bouncing toward that sideline because they, they really popped him out of bounds over there. That was Skipper. That hit him, number 26. First and 10, Georgia at the 30-yard line of South Carolina. 13 minutes to go in the in this third quarter. McCarthy gets about six before he's hauled down to the 24-yard line, and he had a convoy of offensive linemen taking him through there. 97, Ricky Haygood made the tackle. But number 55, Wayne Radloff, the center, really did a good job of leading McCarthy through the hole. Well, Radloff is a fine football player, and uh, I like the way McCarthy runs. His legs keep churning, uh, Steve. They, he never stopped. He finally stopped when he ran into uh, Haygood, but before that, he had really fine leg drive. Second down, about four and a half yards to go inside the 25 of South Carolina. Walker with another good hole. Trying to get to the outside, gets a good block. 
breaks a tackle and is bumped out of bounds near the 10 yard line. They'll mark it at the 10 and a half of South Carolina. And again, Harry Skipper, number 26, ran him out of bounds in the secondary. Same type of football play as the last long run he made. He took the football, broke into the secondary, and then broke to the outside. Skipper knocked him out of bounds again. But if they can get Herschel, as you see all of a sudden now, his average has jumped up to almost four yards to track. The first half is on just about two and a half. So he is getting some running room this half, and it is helping the Georgia offense. He's gained 25 yards in his last two carries and 40 yards in his last three carries. First and 10 from the 11. Walker again. Cutting back. Still on his feet. Driving. Touchdown. That looked like Herschel Walker. That was a fine run. Coach Dewey looks happy there. Not as happy as I think uh, he will be when the game's over if he's winning. But uh, nice run. Here's a pitch back to Herschel. They put a man in motion. They're trying to confuse the South Carolina people a little bit. And they get a good kick out blocked by the fullback. And Herschel breaks two, three, four tackles and gets it in the end zone. Helps Georgia tremendously with that fine line blocking and good running by Herschel. Kevin Butler, who is perfect on extra points, on to attempt another one. Jim Broadway, the holder. And again, it's good. 12 minutes and 13 seconds remaining in the third quarter. Georgia has now jumped out to a 21 to 6 lead over South Carolina. Herschel Walker on an 11 yard touchdown run. Herschel looks happy about that. And gives him a chance to wow. Some people think a ball player would be lost out of uniform. Don't you believe it? As long as I've got my Levi Garrett with me, I can handle any sport. I think Levi Garrett's the best taste of chewing tobacco I ever tried. And you'll be saying it too, every time you enjoy that great taste in loose leaf or plug. Whoa! So whether you're pitching a big game or playing this big game, get the best taste of chewing tobacco I ever tried. Levi Garrett. Coming up. Excuse me. My mother that sure looks pretty. Mm -hmm. Mighty tasty, Slim. I'm worth the trip, Colorado. We come a thousand miles for this here Stroh's beer. Not surprising. Happens every day. Yeah? Excuse me. I say, old chap, a cold bottle of Stroh's, please. <laughs> I like you. Five minutes and 45 seconds remaining in the third quarter. Georgia leading South Carolina 21 to 6. Fourth down and about 13 and a half yards to go. Jimmy Harrell, number 82, is the deep man. As Chris Norman, number 13, is on to punt for South Carolina. He'll hit it from just inside midfield. High kick. Heading for the far corner and into the end zone for a touchback. Here's Will Forge, who was helped off the field, being shaken up and having his left leg attended to by the trainer. And we may have a report for you on his condition momentarily. Looks like he's got one of those leg cramps from the way they're rubbing it. Now, I don't know what he has, but when they rub around the calf, sometimes it's just a cramp. But you know something interesting about the last drive? South Carolina had the ball for six minutes, had only moved the ball past into the Georgia 40-yard line and had not scored. That helped Georgia when they did score and kept the ball. First and 10, Georgia at their own 20. 5.24 to go in the third period. The Bulldogs lead the Gamecocks 21 to 6. Herschel Walker dragging a tackler across the line of scrimmage. Gets about three or four yards. James Seawright had him around the ankle. And Herschel was still able to drag him forward out to the 23, make it the 24-yard line where it'll be second and six. James Seawright is a big, fine-looking linebacker. He's just a sophomore. And uh, when he gets hold of you, he can pull you down. He weighs about 215 pounds, six foot three. McCarthy and Walker in the backfield behind Lastinger on second down and six. 
McCarthy straight ahead and near the first down yardage as he gets it just about to the 30 yard line. It will depend on where they mark the football as to whether or not it is enough for a Georgia first down. Ricky Haygood, who suffered a leg injury earlier in the game, but is back. And number 43, J.D. Fuller, make the tackle. It is enough for a Georgia first down. That was Broadway warming up his kicking leg on the sideline. That's uh, something that just come into football over the last several years. And uh, I think it really helps them to have a net like that and uh, get warmed up so they can make the kick. Georgia first and 10 from their own 30. Herschel Walker tripped up in the backfield and held for no gain, but a penalty flag is thrown in the South Carolina defensive backfield. James Seawright again making the tackle on Walker, but we'll have to see what the infraction is. Offside is called against South Carolina. Bad defensive play by South Carolina on a crucial down. Now that was a short, that would have been a fourth down play for Georgia, and South Carolina went ahead to football. And that's first down. Not only that, it'll be first and five at the 35 of Georgia. First and five, that's right. Yeah, Georgia's got uh, a big fan over there to keep cool. It's I don't. It doesn't seem to be too hot up here. Now, I don't know about down on the sideline because we don't have on the pads to eat, but we're pretty cool. Well, the artificial turf tends to make it a little warmer, too, because it holds the heat of the day longer. First and five. On the reverse, number 28, Melvin Simmons, trying to get outside, picks up only a couple before J.D. Fuller, number 43, junior out of Clinton, South Carolina, makes the tackle there. It'll be second down after a gain of about two yards and about three yards to go. Three minutes and 42 seconds remaining in the third quarter. Fuller was second last year, of course, in tackles of conference. He's all over the field. That was a, uh, the offensive play by Georgia with Summons is something they need in their offense, I think, uh, a little more as a, a counter type play to someone with Herschel going the other way. Second down, about two and a half to go. Walker. Fumble! South Carolina picks it up at the 35. Bryant Gillard, number 20, recovered the fumble as Walker was hit by James Seawright, number 45. He fumbled the football, and it looks like Harry Skipper. Number 26, who made the fumble recovery. Yeah, here comes Herschel hitting in the hole, and he gets stripped of the football and picked up the Gillard, and it's a first down for South Carolina. It just looked like Seawright reached in there and jerked the ball right out of his hands, and first down, South Carolina. And there's Harry, who had a 100-yard interception return this year. He wanted to run that one back for a minute, and finally, he remembered and sat down. That Skipper, a senior Skipper. out of Baxley, Georgia. the third Georgia turnover. South Carolina has committed two. South Carolina with a chance to get back in the game trailing 21 to 6 has a first and 10 at the Georgia 38 following the turnover. Bradshaw with good protection. Nobody to throw to though. Finally he fires it over the middle and complete to Chris Wade. And Wade is hauled down inside the 25 near the 21 of Georgia by number 48 Knox Culpepper and number 27 Ronnie Harris big gain for South Carolina first and 10 at the Georgia 21. Bradshaw hit Wade here coming across and of course Bradshaw made the play because he moved around got away from that Georgia rush found a man open coming across the middle and Wade's a big tough receiver he's got good size and it was a first pass completion that really helped South Carolina here in the second half. Bill Bradshaw, the sophomore from Spartanburg, South Carolina, who's completed 56% of his passes so far this year. The pitch back to Quentin Lewis. Lewis has a good hole and gets it inside the 20, down near the 17-yard line before Terry Hogue, number 14, the rover, and 57, Kenneth Sims, make the hit on him there. The gain will be four yards. It'll be second down and six at the 17 of Georgia. Georgia is doing their best again to get South Carolina back in the football game and South Carolina is knocking at the door of opportunity and if they put it in there and get back in this game with a 21 to 13 or 14 it'll be a wild fourth quarter. They mark it at the 18 yard line so it is second down and seven. Bradshaw. Good protection into the end zone. Incomplete intended for Ira Hillary and a great defensive play by Ronnie Harris. Prevented the touchdown. Ronnie Harris knocked that ball away at the last instant. 
It looked like he was going to catch the football from a touch for a touchdown from up here. But Harris, who's a senior out of California, made a nice, nice play on Hillary, who is the leading receiver for the uh, South Carolina football team. Great punt return, I mean, kick return. And I thought Bradshaw made a nice play, but it was fine defensive play. Bradshaw now four of nine for 33 yards passing with one interception as you look at Harris. It is third down and seven yards to go from the Georgia 18 yard line. The Bulldogs lead the Gamecocks 21 to six with two minutes left to go in the third quarter. A stoppage of play as flags fly before they get the snap off. What that was, Steve, that was because Georgia was look, they looked like they were going to blitz. South Carolina had an automatic where when they were going to blitz, they moved a backer, a halfback over to pick up a guy who was going to blitz. Then they moved the man out wide to take advantage of the guy who was playing man to man, and they took too much time doing all that. That could turn out to be a big penalty. Delay of game against South Carolina moves the football back to the 23. It will be third down, and instead of seven to go, it is now 12 yards to go. with good protection now he's under pressure still looking into the end zone can't find anyone open and he's hauled down at the 23 at the line of scrimmage by Stan Dooley number 50 the junior from Toccoa Georgia in hot pursuit of Bradshaw finally caught up with him and it will be right at the line of scrimmage fourth down and 12 yards to go for South Carolina at the Georgia 23 and a half you know one of the one of the uh, plays that uh, Dooley just made, uh, he utilized his speed. And uh, what they did for this particular ball game, they took Freddie Gilbert and moved him from position, from the position that Dooley's playing now. Here's, well, we can't see it. No, they faked the field goal attempt and snapped the ball and tried to run with it. As Fleetwood was on and he and Norman were standing near the hash mark, they snapped the football and tried to take off with it. But Georgia was right on top of it. They only gained a couple of yards, if anything. And the big pileup that ensued around the 23-yard line is being attended to by the officials. I don't think anybody's hurt, but it will be Georgia's football, and I, I find it hard to believe that they gave up the opportunity for three points with a quarter plus left to play. First and ten, Georgia from their own 20-yard line, leading 21 to six as we near the end of the third quarter. Lastinger firing and completing it to number 20, Kevin Harris, and Harris. Has enough for the first down as he gets across the 30 before Harry Skipper, number 26, makes the tackle. They'll mark it at the 31, gain of 11, first and 10, Georgia, with one minute and 12 seconds remaining in the third quarter. Well, you notice they've given uh, personal rest. They've got Carney Norris in their tail back, and I think that's, uh, I think that's a good move. Uh, Herschel needs some time off also. He, he might be a, the greatest runner in college football, but he does need some rest. And they fake Norris and hit the turn in pattern. Nice first down play. First and 10 from the 31. Carney Norris with his first carry of the night. Breaks a tackle. He has a first down. Down the sidelines is still motoring, but finally runs out of sideline. Andrew Province, number 70, to show you how quick he is was chasing Carney Norris 20 yards downfield. They're going to mark the football back in Georgia territory. They'll say that he stepped out of bounds at the 46. Still a 15 yard gain and another first down for Georgia. Yes, that's a nice run by Norris. He's a fresh back and uh, sometimes a fresh back is a little better than a tired back. And I'm glad to see they're giving Herschel a rest and Norris look good on that power sweep. Good blocking. That's the time remaining in the third quarter. First and 10 Georgia. The fullback, Young, spinning off one tackler and getting to midfield before Andrew Province, number 70, makes the tackle. There was a late hit and a penalty marker thrown in the secondary as a player is down near the 40-yard line for Georgia. It looks like Melvin Simmons, number 28, was shaken up and a penalty flag was thrown at that point as action continued. And a clip will be called against Georgia as apparently... Simmons, who was shaken up on the play, clipped one of the South Carolina defensive backs. Steve, sometimes uh, when they see that flag, they lay there. 
do not really hurt. <laughs> We've all seen that happen. Make a, a late hit. And you see a that sympathy. Of, that's why it's called a, oh, I, I'm hurt. Say something about me. I didn't mean to get the penalty, and he didn't. It's just an aggressive play. It moves the football, however, back to just outside the Georgia 35, where it will be second down and 21 yards to go. Lastinger to pass. Flips it out intended for Carney Norris and incomplete. Norris was run out of bounds by Paul Martin, number 98. And it'll be third down and 21 now. I didn't like that play by uh, uh, Lastinger at that time. Uh, that was a two yard pass with two defenders very close to the uh, receiver. It's the kind of play that could turn the football game around. If you're going to throw the ball uh, at this situation, you shouldn't be throwing the ball flat with people covered. Get it, get it out of bounds. It would have been safe. And then line up and kick the ball on fourth down. But don't give him a big play. He's got to make better plays than that. 25 seconds left to go in the third quarter. As you see, third down and 21 from just outside the Georgia 35. Firing it downfield and incomplete and out of bounds. It was intended for number 20, Kevin Harris. Harry Skipper, number 26, was back defending for South Carolina. Fourth down and 21 will bring on the Georgia punting unit as Lastinger goes to the sideline. Now, even though that pass wasn't completed, again, that was a better throw than the last one because he led the receiver, he overthrew him a little bit, but there was a lot more safety in that pass because it would have been like a short punt if they had it in a second pass. Jim Broadway, as you see, on the punt for Georgia. Ira Hillary, number one, back deep to receive, standing around his own 25. Broadway just does get it away. It's an end-over-end line driver, and Hillary takes the fair catch but bobbles it at the 32 yard line and the fans here want a penalty but he did not feel the ball cleanly so he's not entitled to the fair catch. Now once you bobble the ball it is not like a clean catch. They can nail it. 33 yard punt by Broadway. South Carolina has the football first and 10 at their own 32. As you see 16 seconds left to go in the third quarter. $57.95, the Mazda B2000 Sundowner is the lowest priced truck in America. Yet it comes with standard features Datsun and Toyota don't even offer on their economy trucks, like a five-speed, steel-belted radials, tinted glass, full carpeting, and sakes alive. Mazda B2000 Sundowner even gets better gas mileage. Only Mazda's got a truck for just $57.95. Bradshaw pitching back to Barry, who cuts back against the grain, tries to get outside, and runs out of bounds as he gets across the 40-yard line. The clock stopping with nine seconds left in the quarter. Terry Hogue, the roverback, number 14, ran him out of bounds, and we've got another injured South Carolina player down, or Georgia player, rather, and it's Dooley, number 50. There's a pitch sweep to uh, Barry, but you know what? I would hate to try and make a living against Georgia, trying to outrun all their uh, defensive players, and he makes a pretty good run out of it, but it's very difficult difficult to go that far. That was a nice hit by Hope, and if he kept his feet and hit through, he would have made a much nicer tackle, but Barry gave him the shot and the blow as opposed to uh, Hope's. It was not 50, but 90. Freddie Gilbert, whom you saw just going off the field, who was shaken up on the play. Nine seconds left to play in the quarter. As Gilbert is being attended to on the Georgia sideline. It is second down. And about one yard to go for South Carolina as they have the ball at their own 42. Just inside the 42. They need to get just about to the 43. Really about a half yard to go here on second down. And a little razzle-dazzle. And now Bradshaw's going to run. He has the first down and gets out of bounds near midfield. As now three seconds are left on the clock. Tom 
McPherson, number 60, ran him out of bounds. They wanted to run that and get somebody deep, Pepper, but it didn't work out. No. No, here you go. He handed the ball to the fullback. Fullback threw it back to Bradshaw. They had their deep, the man covered that they were going to throw to, and uh, Bradshaw made a nice play out of it, though. He turned maybe a loss into a gain by being quick, and uh, I like quarterbacks who can run. First and 10 South Carolina, however, just short of midfield. Three seconds remaining on the clock. This should be the last play of the third quarter. Barry gets a good block. Makes a nice move and gets into Georgia territory inside the Georgia 45 before he's tripped up by Mike Jones. It'll be a gain of about eight yards on the play, but that's the end of the third quarter here at Williams Price Stadium in Columbia, South Carolina. Sold out, jam-packed, and making noise. As with 15 minutes left to play, Georgia leads South Carolina 21 to 6. I'm Congressman Newt Gingrich, the Republican co-chairman of the Congressional Space Caucus. The United States is at a crossroads in both its prosperity and its very survival. And the high frontier gives us a chance to leapfrog past the huge Russian army to regain our national security through developments in space. The space shuttle gives us an opportunity to develop through the high frontier program answers to the Russian challenge that would put us a decade ahead of the Russians in dominating the high frontier of space. You know, he who controlled the air controlled World War II, the Japanese early on in the Pacific with their carriers, the Americans later on, the Germans early on in the Blitzkrieg with their Stuka dive bombers, the Americans later on. In the future, he who controls space may well control the future of mankind. Please write to us at this address. If you've got small packages, big packages, and in-between packages that must get there tomorrow morning, you could be boxed in if you don't know the one company that delivers them all overnight. Not that one. And not that one. Only Emory AM schedules on-time delivery of virtually any size shipment to most of America the very next morning. For sure. It's the Emory Edge. Any size on time. For sure. Once you put motor on a can, you can't see it, you can't feel it, you can't watch it work. So how do you know how good it is? At Quick Estate, we put it in writing. We back up our quality with a lifetime guarantee. How do you know how good Quick Estate is? We guarantee every new car engine against all related failure for as long as you own your car. We put it in writing. We're working to keep your car staying on the road. How do you know how good Quick Estate is? We put it in writing. No one else does. Young, driving outside the 30 and getting to about the 35 is Barry Young before James Seawright, number 45, makes the tackle for South Carolina. Gain of about six yards on the play. It'll be second down and four. They put Barry back in there, even though he fumbled the two footballs. I can see Coach Dooley uh, looking a little more comfortable now about the uh, score, 21 to 6 with about 12 minutes left to go. And I, I'm glad to see him give Young the football again. The Georgia 35. Young again driving straight ahead and has enough for the first down as he gets some convoy help from the offensive line and gets it across the 40 before number 42 Mike Dura and number 90 Frank Wright combined to make the stop for South Carolina. The ball right at the 40, first and 10, Georgia, 12 23 left to play. Hey, they're trying to keep the uh, Herschelis decoy and make some first downs, and they made the first down with a fullback carrying the ball on both uh, uh, the first two plays of this drive. And uh, they have Herschel back in there, but they're going to help themselves giving the ball to the fullback like that. 21 to 6, Georgia leading with 12.06 to play in the football game. First and 10, Georgia from their own 40 yard line. Walker breaking a tackle, making a great move and getting into South Carolina territory before James Seawright, number 45, can haul him down at the South Carolina 48. And that is the Herschel Walker we've seen the last two years. Right, he took this pitch sweep and he started wide and then cut back against the grain, jumped a couple of guys coming through, used those quick feet, and one man, Seawright, was left between him and the goal line. And there might have been somebody else in the secondary, but I don't believe one man could tackle Herschel Walker in the secondary. 24 rushes for 102 yards. Not a bad day. 
Herschel's got another 100-yard day. It is first and 10 Georgia at the 48 of South Carolina. Young going straight ahead and picking up two to the 46 of South Carolina, where Phil Ellis, number 80, makes the tackle, along with number 43, J.D. Fuller. You know, one of the things that uh, they used to do with Tony Dorsett was to put him at fullback some and move him around different positions. And I, and, and I believe before it's over, Georgia will do that with Herschel, slip him up to fullback. That was Barry Young that time, and nothing wrong with Barry, but uh, once in a while, they might slip Herschel in that fullback position. Second down, eight yards to go. Lastinger looking to throw on the sprint out. Has it, complete to Chuck Jones. The senior split in from Valdosta is out of bounds for a Georgia first down. Inside the 40 of South Carolina, Earl Johnson, number 22, was covering him on the play. Chuck Jones, he makes a nice cut here as uh, Lassinger comes to the outside behind two blockers, just hits the flank of man on an out route. He catches the ball, he's out of bounds, makes sure his feet are in. Nice throw, nice timing. Ball is at the 37 and a half of South Carolina. 11.05 left in the ball game. Georgia driving, leading 21 to 6. Walker getting to the outside. Fumbles, and the ball is picked out of midair by number 63, Mike Weaver. Meet Cleaver Weaver. Brother. Had some nice That wasn't Meet Cleaver. That's his, <laughs> his brother. brother. That's, uh, that's another Weaver. I don't so, know if he's a Cleaver or not. <laughs> he had some nice hands, though, to pick that ball out of midair as Walker had it stripped from him. Now, here, here's the play again. Herschel is coming to the outside. Now, one of the problems with Herschel right here is that he has the ball in the hand that has been broken, the thumb. And he's probably not as strong. And when he runs to the right, he's got to carry it in his right arm. And he's more uh, has more of a tendency to fumble probably going to that side. And that ball was hit by a helmet. That's why it came out. Very young, straight ahead. Not enough for the first down. As on second down and five, Young picks up about three inside the 30 to the 29. Andrew Province, number 70, and 90 Frank Wright on the tackle. Young is not having a bad night. He hasn't carried the football, and except for those two consecutive fumbles, he's done a good job. He's averaging almost five yards a carry tonight. Well, in the state of Georgia, when he and Herschel were seniors, until Herschel signed, he was the outstanding back in the state, and Georgia had already uh, scored a coup by signing Barry Young before they signed Herschel. Third down, about a yard and a half to go. Penalty marker down, and I think Georgia jumped off sides. It looked as if it might have been Clarence K, number 84, the tight end who moved early. I think it was, and I think he was a little anxious. South Carolina made a move on defense. Uh, was They were very aggressive, and I think he saw one of the South Carolina people move, and then he moved, which is what you cannot do, because you must wait until the quarterback says hut one, hut two. You remember that, uh, Steve? Oh, I do. Okay. <laughs> here we go. You can see they're going to run the lead option. They're going to fake to Herschel here, and then run the pitch to the uh, halfback going to the other side. But the tight end was offside, it looked like, from here. And uh, I believe that uh, South Carolina will take the penalty unless they make Georgia uh, stand with a play that they just lost ground on. I'm sure that's what the discussion is about as Vince Dooley looks on from the Georgia sideline. Nine minutes and 39 seconds remaining to be played in the game. Richard Bell, South Carolina coach, also craning his neck to see what the officials are having to say to their players. You know, sometimes I'm a little confused. Sometimes when a man jumps off sides, what they do, I'll talk about it when he gets through. Let's see what the indication is. Referee Thomas Thamard is trying to calm the South Carolina sideline. As you can see, they are upset. Legal procedure against Georgia and a dead ball foul offsides against South Carolina. And the South Carolina coaching staff is rather demonstrative in expressing their disapproval of the referee's decision. So they are offsetting penalties, illegal procedure against Georgia, and they say that South Carolina was offside as well. Nine minutes and 15 seconds left to go. Third and one, Georgia. From the 29 of South Carolina, Walker has enough for the first down as he bangs off one tackler and falls forward to the 26. J.D. Fuller cut his legs out from under him, but it's enough for a first down as we have a South Carolina player down and injured at the 30-yard line. Number 82.
22, Skip Minton, an outside linebacker and a sophomore out of Hialeah, Florida. That was a tough run by Herschel. He banged in there, and there wasn't a lot of running room, and that's where he's really effective. He can carry a man or two for a yard, make the first down. Minton has played a fine football game uh, thus far tonight, and uh, I don't know what kind of injury he has, and I hope it's not serious, but he was really blocked by the fullback. from the field. It looks to be some kind of a leg injury. And we'll certainly hope that it's not too serious. He has played uh, uh, an outstanding game tonight. And, uh, uh, you know, in the fourth quarter, this late, when you got a big, strong back by Kershaw, there are a lot of people who can get tired and uh, not protect themselves. Nine minutes to play in the football game. First and 10, Georgia at the South Carolina 31. Walker running over the umpire and a few South Carolina defenders as he gets it inside the 15-yard line. James Seawright, number 45, makes the tackle. And Herschel wasn't going to let the umpire or anybody stop him. No, that umpire's fair game. And Herschel came through the line carrying the ball in his good arm, bounces through, and you can see how low he's running here with all that strength and power in those legs. And that was a big run for Herschel. Puts him up to 125 yards and 27 carries. A good night for Herschel Walker. Another first down for Georgia as they have the ball at the 13 of South Carolina, leading 21 to 6 and threatening to extend that lead. Walker trying to get to the outside. He's got lots of company. 25, Pat Bowen, the free safety, and a senior from Mechanicsburg, Pennsylvania, strung it out and met Walker right there for a short gain. That was a big hit. His, his top 81 performance was also against Georgia, and uh, he is a, uh, a real hitter. That shot he made on Herschel there was a form tackle. He had his head across his bow, his feet were up under him, and he popped him, and even the Herschel Walker of this world can't get away from that. Not that kind of tackle. No gain on the play as they mark it right at the line of scrimmage. As you see, second down and 10. Walker on the delay inside the 10 and down near the five yard line. And again, 45 James Seawright was there getting help from Phil Ellis. Another good game for Walker. It will be a gain of seven yards and will give Georgia the football at the six yard line. Second down and about three and a half yards to go. I like this drive by Georgia. They, they've made a nice drive with uh, pressure on them. Second down and three from the six yard line in the power eye formation. Lastinger faking to Walker, throwing in the end zone. Touchdown! Clarence K was all alone as the fake worked beautifully. And it is now 27-6, Georgia. That was another big play for uh, Lassinger because the more passes he hits, the more confidence he gets. And you can see here, he's rolling out, takes the Herschel Walker, rolls it toward the end zone, and, and Kay is all alone. They've got two defenders covering the uh, fullback in the flat, and he is wide open. Nice play, big touchdown for Georgia. Kevin Butler on to attempt his fourth extra point of the night. No good. And Butler misses his first extra point of the season. Up until that point, he was six out of six. You know what, though, Steve? When he misses one, he misses it way up in the crowd. <laughs> he still kicks it a long way. He sure does. Seven minutes and 36 seconds remaining to play in the football game. Georgia has gone out in front of South Carolina 27 to six on a six yard touchdown pass from Lastinger to Kay. Buds for that first day on the job. This buds for you. I'll give you. The king of beers is coming through. Yeah, just for you. That distinctively clean, crisp taste that says Budweiser. For all you do. This buds for you. What's a Mazda GLC doing here in Germany, home of some very refined economy cars? Making a point about outstanding value. 
Because while the front-wheel drive GLC is also sophisticated and offers the performance, mileage, and versatility you should expect, it offers it all at a price you don't expect. The more you look at some of the finest economy cars in the world, the more you like the 1982 Mazda GLC. South Carolina, third and ten at their own 34. Beckham, again with good protection. And it's complete to number two, Chris Wade, who just did get the football. Jeff Sanchez, number 31, knocks him down there. And it was Ronnie Harris who came in front of him and almost picked it off. But Wade makes the reception, and it is in Georgia territory at the 49 of the Bulldogs, first and 10, South Carolina. Here's a nice throw by Beckham. Uh, he hits Wade right out there in front of, in front of one defender and, and in behind the other. I like that. He's got a nice touch. Here's the throw right here. Nice touch on the football. Laid it right in there. Wade makes a good catch. Beckham throwing back on the screen to Barry on first and ten. Barry with not much blocking help. Dances around and finally gets out of bounds. A penalty marker will go down for a late hit out of bounds in front of the South Carolina bench as Barry was jumped on after he was out of bounds. Mike Jones, number 45, knocked him out of bounds. It'll be a gain of about four yards on the play to the Georgia 45. That was a probably a late hit, but I'll tell you one thing, the South Carolina coaches have called that. I mean, they were throwing their flag, <laughs> flags early. Watch them. They and weren't going to let him miss No, it. no, no. Barry comes down the sideline, and the defensive man comes in, and he puts his headgear on him. But those South Carolina coaches, they were throwing that flag in a hurry, long before the official threw his. The gain may have only been six yards, but the penalty is 15 and moves the ball down to the 30-yard line of Georgia. Six minutes and one second remaining in the game. South Carolina now with an opportunity to get some points on the board here late in the fourth quarter as they have a first and 10 at the Georgia 30 after the penalty. Beckham with all day to throw. Lofting one long and complete to Ira Hillary. Great catch at the five-yard line. That was a nice throw. Now, Sanchez almost made the play. So he came across there and might have missed the football, but Hillary kept his eyes right on that football and took it in, and it's a nice gain for South Carolina. Nice throw there for uh, Beckham, and Hillary came up with a football first down for South Carolina at the five-yard line. Beckham now is three of five passing for 48 yards as he has hit Ira Hillary down to the five-yard line. Georgia 27 to 6, but South Carolina threatening with 552 remaining in the football game. First and goal, South Carolina at the Georgia 5. Beckham incomplete, intended for Quentin Lewis. And I want to tell you that Dale Carver, number 96, thought he had an interception, and then Lewis thought he had a touchdown pass, but neither one of them came up with it. Well, I think Dale Carver really plays outstanding football for Georgia. As I said earlier in the Clemson game, the opening game of the year, he made four or five of the biggest plays, and you can see right here, he drops off and covers this man in the flat as Beckham rolls out to his right, and he sticks that big hand up, and he thinks he's got that football. I don't think he'd have run too far with it, but he did want that ball. Second down and goal from the five-yard line for South Carolina. Beckham throwing into the end zone. Touchdown, Lewis. Well, Carver got beat that time. We said something nice about him, and he made a play fake inside, and Lewis caught the ball coming out of the backfield on a play-action pass from Beckham. You can see right here, he fakes the man up the middle, holds it with the outside linebacker, and then the halfback just swings down the sideline and with touch. That is touch right there, folks. And he lays it right over his hands. He catches the ball. It's a touchdown by Quentin Lewis from Midway, Georgia. I've never been there. Not too far from Savannah. Is that where it yeah. is? Now, Pepper, those two scoring opportunities that South Carolina was unable to convert here in the second half look mighty big as they now trail 27 to 12 with the extra point to come in South Carolina going for two. out again. Beckham completes the pass to Wade, but he's short of the goal line. Daryl Jones was covering him on the play, so the point try for two, uh, the two-point conversion attempt fails, brother, and with 543 remaining in the football game, the score remains Georgia 27 and South Carolina 12.
you can beat the $8,600 average price tag on a new car at your nearest Hertz used car sales location. 1981 Ford Escorts from only $44.99. 1981 Ford Fairmonts from only $45.99. Come in today and ask for your Bulldog discount. All cars come with the Hertz limited powertrain warranty at no extra cost. All cars selected from the finest in the rental fleet. Call 800-654-3131 for your nearest Hertz sales location. Talk to her. Great. Come here often? <laughs> What's your sign? Tourist, right? Didn't we ever meet someplace else before? No. Okay, forget it. Bartender, let me have the straws. From one beer lover to another straws. Make that two. Three minutes, 18 seconds left to go in the game. Fourth down, four yards to go. South Carolina running out of time, but a first down to Quentin Lewis. As Beckham hits him over the middle, and the clock will stop for the advancement of the chains. Knox Goldpepper, number 48, made the tackle. And South Carolina is ready to go as soon as the officials say the chains are set. 3-11 left to play. 27-12. Georgia leading South Carolina. Beckham. Under pressure, completes it to Corley. And Corley's bumped out of bounds at about the 46 of South Carolina by Ronnie Harris, number 27. The clock stops with 3.04 left to play. Oh, Tony Flacke is on the bench. Uh, he's a fine a freshman defensive back, and they don't start many freshmen in Georgia. But he has stepped in over there and played very, very well. You know, Beckham has not hurt himself tonight in this in this game. It is a uh, it gives him a chance to get back in the fight for that number one position the way he's played. 304 left to go in the game. It's raining as Beckham drops back. Firing over the middle. Complete. This time Wade has it and Wade goes the They're back in the not back, maybe not back in the game, but they are certainly a lot closer than they were. And that field goal that they missed. Didn't go for early in the ball game, as you mentioned. It might be a key play because they would be 21 right now. Great play by Wade and Beckham. You know, when he threw this football, I didn't even see the man that was coming out to catch it, but he threw a nice spiral, and it comes Wade, and he gets a nice block here, a block back right here, all the way. Touchdown. Puts him back in this football game. A 54-yard play from Beckham to Wade. And here he goes again. Wade catches that football and turns it on. He's a big receiver and has good size, and it's just all the way. Nobody clipped. I like that. They were very careful. 27 to 18 now with 2 minutes and 54 seconds as you look at Wade on the bench. South Carolina going for two. Beckham firing in the end zone incomplete. It was intended for Ira Hillary, but it was thrown too tall. And I don't know why, but the clock is running. The clock should not be running no. on the extra point attempt. So the officials are going to have to correct that, I'm sure. They ran off about 10 seconds off the clock. The score remains 27 to 18 as South Carolina is coming back. Whether or not it is too little too late remains to be seen. Well. the Academy Theater, you'll find worlds of comedy, passion, and dreams. I want to leave this town in a crimson blaze of glory. Everybody says that Noah is crazy. Her dress was white, her blood was red. She skipped, she jumped, till she was dead. Buy your season ticket to these plays, plus a world premiere at substantial savings. Well, as we lost power and were away for a moment, Tron Jackson took it in from the three-yard line for Georgia. 
Butler made the extra point to give Georgia a 34 to 18 lead with just 16 seconds left to play in the football game. Georgia just looking like they were trying to run out the clock got a couple of great runs from Jackson one that took the ball down to the three and then another one from the three to take it into the end zone and extend the Bulldogs lead over South Carolina and now Butler will try to kick it up in the stands again to avoid any kind of a run back as he has done earlier this evening. Hillary number one is back there but again it goes clear over the end line and the automatic touchback will be first and ten of the 20 South Carolina with virtually no hope and only 16 seconds left on the clock 34 to 18 Georgia leading the Gamecocks last gasp from their own 20 yard line Beckham with all day to throw as Georgia has the prevent defense and Terry Hogue intercepts for Georgia Hogue the rover back running around running as much off the clock as he can and steps out of bounds with four seconds remaining number 12 John Lastinger the fine Georgia quarterback who had a good night tonight and into the ball game now is at quarterback for Georgia number 15 Todd Williams and that's the final play Georgia runs out the clock. Williams gets to take at least one snap from center. Well, he's getting some experience. And Georgia has defeated South Carolina here in Columbia, 34 to 18. Vince Dooley and Richard Bell meeting each other at the center of the field. The Bulldogs now 3 and 0 on the year, and South Carolina evens their record at 2 and 2. Georgia winning it 34-18 over South Carolina in Columbia. We'll be back with a final word in just a minute. The final score, the Georgia Bulldogs 34, the South Carolina Fighting Gamecocks 18 here in Columbia this evening. And Pepper, your final thoughts on the game. Well, Georgia won the football game, and they outmanned the uh, South Carolina team, but they did not fight South Carolina. It was a tough football game. Both uh, schools should be proud of their teams, and I thoroughly enjoyed working a football game with you, Steve. Always a pleasure, Pepper.